bad. How far are we from the stairs? Oh, you know, just a, a small hike, really. <laughs> just the tiniest of journeys across the entirety of the level. But you, of course, know me and know my bad habits when it comes to trusting Auto Explorer with my very well-being. I mean, how could O ever betray me? After the, uh, the ups and downs we went through on Peter, our relationship has never been stronger, really, at the end of the day here. But we can, we can head a little bit closer to the stairs, since that is definitely a, uh, a viable, if not just intelligent, decision. Just straight up the right thing to do. And see how it treats us here. Hello, my strong friends. We are starting to see some issues already from the lack of max mana from that one mutation. 10% might not seem like a huge number, especially when it's 10% of like 30, that's only 3 mana. But it can feel like the world of dis uh, difference, rather, when you're stuck in a nasty situation and you need that 3 mana in order to survive. Oh look, a magic trident, resident sleeper. Yeah, who needs tridents, really? Plus 8? I mean, it's okay, I guess. I'm more of a a plus 10 and above kind of guy myself, you know? Anything else is just a bit of a waste of our time. Did I use Bloodless form at all during this run? I hate to admit that I did not use Bloodless at all during this run. I always want to try and make use of the features, but we also don't want to die as a, a sticking point for me. I don't know, maybe that's controversial in this video game that's all about not dying, especially when it's usually our, our stream little tagline on our stream. Ooh, I definitely do not want a Berserk Quicksilver Dragon though, so let's take care of that son of a gun before the moth gets an opportunity. And perfect. We'll use Bloodless on the D1 stairs, exactly. We can go home to our family in full vampire form, they'll appreciate it. Until then, I just want to survive. That's really the be-all end-all of the run at this point in time. Oh my friend, you do more damage than I care to admit, but we should be, once again, in not too bad of a spot here. Vampiric Lagitang, always lovely for making sure we're staying a little bit topped off in these encounters. Do you not have a weapon at all, my friend? I mean, to each their own. I'm not going to judge you for your decisions here in the dungeon. I know I've not always made the, the best decisions myself, so it would seem hypocritical to do so. But let's just walk away from these sons of guns quickly, but not too quickly, so that I don't accidentally walk my way into a nasty situation. I feel like that's kind of the give and take of Auto Explorer, is sure it can be dangerous and lead you way further away from your stairs than you have any right to be, but the flip side of that is it saves me from myself and the occasional stupidity that leads me to uh, walking straight into monsters without really paying enough attention. So Dispelling Energy Bolt missed me, oh jeez, and then we got teleported and maybe a different one hit? No, just some lightning hit us, so we're not losing statue form quite yet but it's definitely in the cards as a possibility. Magical effects are unraveling. Let's give me some elixir, and then I would like to just shoot out some destruction. That's not better. I hate to admit that is not, in fact, in any way, shape, or form better. The iguana, on the other hand, pretty fantastic. I'm happy to try and take on an iguana in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Let's just irradiate these sons of guns real quick. If it's just you and me, my friend, we should be all right to reach out and grab you. Maybe toss a couple boomerangs and not too shabby here. Perfect. Is this the turns he plays in Meteor in waiting room? Oh, there will come a time. We'll see if we maybe have an opportunity to throw in a bit of a uh, a bonus to play Meteor in before it officially comes out, but I know in general I've usually waited for the 
the full release, the stable. We'll have to see. Wouldn't mind checking out, especially since the last suggestion you made of Ogre ended up being probably the most fun run that we've done so far in this entire series. So, I don't know, I have a sneaking suspicion that, that you may just know what you're talking about when it comes to this game. <laughs> just maybe, even though I always learn fantastic new things whenever I come and watch your side of things. Oh, jeez, minus 20 corrosion? <laughs> That's not great. Minus 24 by the end. Oh jeez, you'd think we we didn't have any resistance to said corrosion. Just luck of the draw in that regard. And I guess not even so, because our luck of the draw is top tier. The heart of the cards is 100% on our side. So I need to start coming up with better idioms that aren't card based to more accurately reflect what our our luck is or is not doing have i played demigod already because that's another strong one i have not so i'm very excited that's right after vampire here i believe and i'm very much looking forward to it i haven't even played demigod since their buff um that was in was it the version before this or this one i never really remember but i'm very much looking forward to getting four stat points or attribute points per third level up definitely seems like to be a lot of fun hello friends and it's tough because i really enjoy the deity system in this game i find the different gods and the playstyles they bring out to be a heck of a lot of fun but there's something to be said about getting to just ignore that for once with demigod and just you know get by by the the sweat on my back the tears that will undoubtedly be shed. Should be a lot of fun. So we don't get quite as corroded this time. Already looking a little bit rough. Oh gosh, and it just continues. My oh my, there we're back at minus 20. So let's step out of dodge for just a brief moment here if possible. We're at zero, zero armor class when we're not in statue form. Oof. It was in 0.27, nice, yeah, so I'll have to, I'm looking forward to giving it a shot. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Why there's so many slimes in Zot, did I bet in Jivia? No, it looks like they were all just hanging out. There was a bit of an acid party going on with all of these oak globes here as well. They were just all having a good time, I guess. Not too shabby. You're not sure you'll ever play anything other than Null as well, Cocktail? I feel that. I went through a phase where I was playing nothing but Nulls for quite a long time because I do just love the adaptability. And using anything you find in the dungeon is absolutely huge. Oh, Quicksilver. You hate to see it. I guess we could try and fight you. Can probably kill you relatively fast. In fact, I don't know what's safer, standing our ground and just killing them in a couple turns or hoping that our zombie hand kiting does the trick. Regardless, we get out of there in one piece without too much trouble. And you know, I was really scared when we first came down into Zot and everything was seemingly too hard to kill, but the rest of that went pretty smoothly. It's not necessarily the be-all end-all, so much worse could be thrown our way, but it's a nice little bit of tension relief at the very least. Not quite to the level of dangerous hubris, but maybe so I'm not constantly shaking over here and endlessly debating every single decision that I make, so that's nice. I'm generally panicking minus four corrosion. Corrosion just sucks. I feel you there. You feel the whole random nature of wanderers, the spirit of the game? Yeah, no wanderer is the way to go. Okay, so we could get constricted, things could start getting berserked everywhere. Have I learned from the last time that we found ourselves in a sketchy stairs situation like this? Maybe, maybe not. Let's just start by irradiating these sons of guns. Oh jeez. Why am I so dumb? Well, at the very least, I too am berserked. So there's something there. We can just head upstairs with our new friends. Hmm. Can't read, can't drink, just too berserk for anything. 
It's not great here. Why do I never learn? At least all of us are berserk together, you know? We have a bit of a stack. We need to restack escape, actually, save it. That's a, a great point. Have 125 health. As long as we don't lose statue form, we should be okay. 98, 98. Okay, you're all equal. Can I use any evocables? No, of course not. I could start to just try and run away, because if we can just get out of Berserk. Can try to cast Blink, it does not work, so I'm instead going to use a scroll of Blinking to just get the heck out of Dodge. Then... Hmm. Could Zombie Hands, but there's no guarantee that we actually hold them back. We're slowed and they're Berserk, so there's going to be a long lull time. So I think we're just going to play it safe, as much as I hate to use these blink scrolls. We're going to walk around the corner here, reach out and grab you, my friend. You're still wild and hey, still berserk over there. Well, let's see, how much damage can you do? 20 plus your mace. Hmm. I should have read Telly as soon as we blinked around the corner. Don't know why it went for zombie hands. I'm going to blame the fact that it started the stream. Still, you know, warming up here. Still getting in the right mindset. You like watching me cocktail? Because I can... Or you can see what things do if you don't murder them immediately. I got this. I'm glad you, uh, you have the belief. But I think we will read Telly. And there we go. Everyone's joined us in our slowed state. That is perfect. And we'll just walk ourselves out of trouble and there we go no problem whatsoever was never even worried we need to stop redemption with a sound alert something that gets me to practice my own habit of trying to take hands off the keyboard instead of just going with my first thought it's something that i i learned in a critical thinking lecture that i had to to go to at one point during one of my courses which is the idea that just jumping to the first solution you think of even if you are pretty sure it will work, is generally not conducive to making sure you have the best solution. And so I've been trying to get better at taking some time and not just following my gut, because sometimes, I mean, it's so rarely, it almost never happens, uh, my gut is not perfectly on top of what I should or should not do. Let's just explore the rest of these stairs so we can at least see where they are. You gotta hate that right there. Nasty dragon right next to a Moth of Wrath. Oof. I mean, we could go straight for destruction. And then we actually want to take out the Moth first. Perfect. And then we should just be able to fight this son of a gun. The old-fashioned way. Lovely. Gotta think things through. Exactly, Brynth. Your first thought is the correct one, they say. <laughs> Oh, unfortunately, not always the case, but I like to think so. That's my first thought on the matter. Don't think, just have. Exactly, exactly. you got me. <laughs> Your first thought is wrong all the time, save it. <laughs> hey, but at least you recognize it. That's the most important part. And unfortunately, Colgate, we do in fact only have one magic mapping. Let's see, we still have the Moth of Wrath down here, so I probably would like to avoid that. And let's just head down this stairwell for now. And that way we can kill this son of a gun. Not quite before they managed to make it to us, but close enough. And in fact, I think these are the same buddies that we were just looking at down the other stairwell. So how about that? Oh, or maybe you're the shadow <laughs> dragon that we saw over there. My bad. I didn't grow up around shadow dragons, so I'm not intimately familiar with the small differences between each and every one of you, though I'm sure you're all unique individuals. And it's important to keep that in mind. But okie dokie, doing a little bit better now that we're not in an emergency scenario. How about that? Plus three plate armor, probably not gonna worry about it. And yeah, having only one magic mapping has been a little bit rough for sure. Be nice to have a little bit more at our disposal, but it is what it is. And we'll have to just save that for Zot 5, I guess. Hello, my moth friend. 
Goodbye. And perfect. You've never had a run where you do not have maps for holes on? You play Jivia more often than it's healthy? Yeah, we've had a very lackluster game in regards to magic mapping in particular. Because we used one for our slime five. But that's it, I'm pretty sure. I don't even know if we used any for uh, like timed gateways or anything, because we didn't really see many of those this game in general. We take a look, did we even see any of them? Huh. How about that? So, yeah, no idea why the dungeon apparently just went completely short on it. Maybe there was a lot of high demand outside of the dungeon, and so... You know, what are you going to do about it? Unfortunately, the buyers just scooped them all up. But okie dokie, let us try to make sure we're keeping everyone contained here. We have resistance to electricity even when we're non-statue form, which is good. But we are starting to run into a scary scenario here. So let's start pulling stuff off before... It's the end of the days. Maybe a bit late for that. HP seems low. Is it low? It's pretty low. It's not too bad. And that's the thing. If we went death, bloodless, it'd be even worse. But I'm sure we'll be fine. Let's just deal for destruction and see what we get out of the mix. Wrote some orb of fire, some pain we do not want to hit you with. I think you can be affected by it. Oh, turns out it doesn't matter quite so much. Hmm. This buddy is very fast. This buddy is slow. These buddies are normal speed. So it's just the electric golem that will follow us to the stairs. Hopefully they blink away. That would be nice. One more turn for you to blink away. Are you gonna do it? No? That's fine. We'll just take you upstairs, read a telly, and should be taken out of here before things get too dire. We can see with reduced healing. Oh wait, no, we no longer have reduced healing. Let's just chug some health potions and get me out of dodge. Fantastic. It's going perfectly. Not at all sketchy. Not in the slightest. Not even scroll shops, Kalate? I don't think so. Let's actually do a quick check. Because I'm not 100% sure. Magic mapping. Nope. Just the now two that we have on us. So, would you look at that? We're, we're getting better as we speak here. Not quite what we want. A killer if he's about to do some work, just wait. Yeah, I, I had faith that the, the Bee Queen on their own with no other followers was going to do it. But unfortunately, apparently just not quite. How about that? Who knew? But here's where Irradiate gets to shine a wee bit. We can throw out some Manifold Assaults to supplement it. And one more should do the trick. Fantastic. Okie dokie, so let us, oops, not do that, and instead head back to our safe stairwell. We can double check before heading down. Lovely. And see how that goes here. Well, it was, slightly, it was a slightly better butterfly. I guess so. If you're looking for a body blocker, you can't complain too much at the end of the day. If they do what it says on the tin, that's all we're really looking for. Those dang Quicksilvers will get you. There's still the Moth of Wrath somewhere, and I'm concerned. But we should be able to take it, especially if it's not surrounded by scarier enemies. It's the only thing that was actually awake there, so I was hoping it would come our way. Hello, friend. Should be able to just kill you, and let's see. So there was a knight in there. Always good to know. Largely black draconians, hey? Maybe I do want to swap back to my second pip of cold resistance. We're seeing a lot of cold damage come out so far. Would I rather have that or the 4 AC? That's a little bit interesting. The stick with first thought versus change thing comes with a lot of discussion about tests in school, secondary post. 
right? Because I feel like that's a, a large section or where a large section of people first hear about the idea of like, go with your first instinct. If you thought it was an answer and then you decide that you might want to change it, go with your first one. At least I definitely heard that a few different times in various test taking lectures and whatnot. But not always the, the best case, at least when it comes to an infinite amount of time that you can spend on this strategic game. Might as well take your time. It turns out studies have shown that when debating the choice, people who changed their answers were overall more likely to be correct than those who stuck with their first one. Right, because I feel like some of that would have to be biased by just the simple fact that you have more time. Oh jeez. Your first thought happens in the moment, and then if you take even the slightest amount of time to think about it, there's a good chance you'll either reinforce what you already believed, or you'll come up with a different perspective that gets you there, so that does make sense. What is my second pip of RC? It is just a resistance from cold grain. That's it, folks. <laughs> yeah, that's all we got going for us right now, unfortunately. Not a heck of a lot of options in the book. Ooh, I definitely would like to stand on this stairwell here. Her friend does have a polearm, which is a bit of a shame. I guess, let's just head upstairs. Now that we've woken the crowds, they should be a little bit more rambunctious in their exploring, and maybe, just maybe, we can catch them all alone in a dark alley here, if possible. That is a quick swap, so you don't need to commit to AC or PIP, you can just swap them around as needed. It's true, but it's which one you want at face value, right? Shouldn't matter too much in the long run. Completely right about that. At least I would hope not. But would like to play it as safe as possible. Let's take our friendly ghost moth upstairs. Oh right, you were once a dragon. How about that? Oh, how the mighty have fallen. It's partly that for the decision making, but the biggest factor turns out to be fear or regret. Even someone who really thinks they should change it will sometimes choose not to because they're more scared of regretting a change than regretting inaction. I think that's that's definitely fair enough. Well, because I feel like that entire bit of psychology is has been used and used uh, used and abused rather by like game show hosts and making sure that you always ask people if they want to change their decision. But not every time necessarily, just when it suits you. Though we all know if it's three doors and you have one revealed to you, you do take the change. Do I actually understand the math behind it on a deep level? No, but I've heard about the thought experiment enough times and I've seen the movie 21, so therefore I'm a genius. And we'll switch. Thank you so much for the extra, I think it's like 3%. With full inventory as a vampire, how is playing Null not a nightmare for me? <laughs> oh, it is. It's just a different kind of nightmare. I think that that's, that's very much a fair question. <laughs> just walk around with a constantly full inventory. I mean, fortunately, as much as I like being able to swap to any weapon I find, I'm usually not hot swapping in the middle of a, an encounter, and there's usually a best, best in class, best in slot. Oh, what the heck is going on here? I have all three upstairs, and I have all three downstairs. What is the Zot 2? Huh. You want to understand the math? Think about 50 doors, and after your first choice, 48 wrong doors are revealed. No matter what else happened, you had a 1 in 50 chance of being right originally, so do you swap? So 50 doors. I pick one. And then 48 wrong doors are revealed. See, I feel like I got my head around it at one point, but then it's been too long since I thought about it. But do you swap in that situation? I feel like it doesn't matter the number of doors, so you would, but that's a gut feeling, and I'd have to take some time to come up with a secondary option, especially since I try not to regret anything, so... I'm definitely falling victim to the usual traps. Trappings there, rather. What are those big wa blue walls supposed to be? You never looked? I think they're just stone? Yeah, rock wall. 
Looks real nice though. Very cool um, inter interior decoration that's been going on here in Zot. Whoever Zot hired, I've got to get their number. Yeah, it's way more likely the other space is the right door. Okay, it seemed like it, but I need to actually work through that at some point. Yeah, the Monty Hall problem, exactly. Always swap. And see, I know always to swap, but that's as far as it gets. But hey, why ever learn anything when I can instead just rely on much more intelligent people than I and copy their homework? That Zot 2 is purely hiding a juicy prize in the center somewhere. It's gotta, right? It's the only explanation. It depends from exact rules. Empty door that you did not choose is revealed regardless of your choice. Correct to swap. Round door you didn't pick is revealed after you choose regardless of your choice. And it happens to be empty this time. Doesn't matter. Door is revealed only if you pick the correct door. Correct to not change. Yeah, but unfortunately you don't know any of that stuff when you're on the other side of the Monty Hall problem. You even show me all the 90 or 49 cards you didn't choose. They're definitely not the ace, so it doesn't matter if you show them to me. Well, right? Exactly. And you as the presenter know what's behind all of the doors, presumably. Otherwise, it's not a very well-tested game show structure. Hello, my friend. If you could come right this way. Yeah, Monty Hall, the unknown door is going to be, you think, something like 49 out of 50 of being the right one, while the one you're sitting on is still the one in 50. Is that right? Okay. I see what you're you're saying it now, because your initial choice was the one in 50. But now you just had it revealed to you that it's just between that other door and you. I don't know. I should, probably shouldn't do these things live on stream, because then I'll just talk myself in circles. But I do like the example of expanding it out to multiple doors, because I do think that that gets around some of the misconceptions that your brain kind of jumps to when it comes to math and probabilities. Probability in general is a wild subject. It was one of my favorite classes to take just because there was a lot of misconceptions and false positives where you, a lot of stuff is just what you think on instinct and it doesn't actually make any sense from a logical standpoint. Oh jeez. Hmm. Nouns out four. I'm gonna read a magic mapping and hopefully there's a real stair nearby. Perfect. That's much safer for me to head back up. Lovely. Stupid probability. Look guys, there's a 50% chance of it being right. Either it is or it isn't. <laughs> Everything's a 50-50 chance, right? That's probability for ya. The other one is that, yeah, if you fail a 50-50, then by definition you have to succeed the next one, right? It's 50-50. One and two. Monty Hall problem is first case, and that is why it is correct to swap. However, quite often it is described poorly and rules are left ambiguous. Fair enough. And hey, St. Rass, the way you usually explain it is this. Imagine instead that the host offers you to swap your door for both the other doors. Then he tells slash shows you that one of them is empty, but you already knew that. I like that. That's a good way of uh, describing it, or describing it rather. If you flip a coin five times, are you more likely to get all heads or all tails? Yeah, what are the, what's the weight of the coin? What are the probabilities of getting both? If they're exactly equal. Oh wait, you said, <laughs> I misread that too. Five heads or one tails and, and four heads. Oh, I don't want to think about it too much, but they are just the same. Now, if you flip a coin infinite number of times until either five heads or tails and four heads shows up, which is more likely to show up first? That's very tricky. St. Rast jumps in with the second one. Yeah, I feel like I'd want to actually think this through instead of half concentrating, but that feels right. Again, going off of instincts, which is generally not a great thing to do in probabilities involved as we just talked about. Hello friends, come one, come all, join the party. Oh geez Louise, let's start throwing out some destruction, shall we? Pain on all of you kiddos. One more here, pain again. I mean, I guess that's what you really want. 
We'll show some pain here. Let's go with another distraction. There we go. Storm is what I was hoping for. A bit of nice AoE. No idea on that one, Ivy. That's fair enough. Again, it's a bit of a, a mind-boggling type of thing when you start getting into those probabilities. And yep, as soon as they're in sequence, the rules bend. Fun. And math. That's why you went into law. <laughs> I think that's the right approach a lot of the time. Save it. Basically, the reason is that if the five head sequence shows up anywhere other than the very start, then there will be a T before it. Exactly, that makes sense. Speech communication was your favorite course, Colgate? Cool, I never took something like that. I took a lot of intro courses because I was thrown into a bit of a weird situation with admissions. Ooh. And speaking of probabilities and maybe paying more attention, let's start thinking about what I'm doing instead of just enjoying the lovely chats. We are not that close to a stairwell. I could probably re-teleport and not be likely to land somewhere safer than I currently am, which is not saying a heck of a lot. Lovely. Don't notice me. Okay, everyone has noticed me. Hello friends, don't mind me, excuse me, pardon me. Should be okay. So in the infinite sequence, the tails, heads, 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 has 31 over 32 odds of showing up before the heads. It's very close to a guarantee. Yeah, it has to be that first one. That just makes sense. Law goes into much harder math, faster than math. That's the funny thing about math, where I feel like difficulty is all super relative. Gosh darn it, I wanted to step on that stairwell, you son of a gun. Well, going back to teleporting here. I'm gonna drink a heal wounds right as we get shot off somewhere random. Perfect, and let us quickly make ourselves a bit of an escape route here, shall we? Hello, my electric friend. Miscasting is not what we want to see right now, of course, but we should be able to kill you nonetheless. And that is perfect. Never a doubt in my mind. Who needs the orb when you have a plus 12 vampiric Lagitang? We should just leave, right? I mean, we could probably be pretty successful in our own lives. The amount of magic and, and physical damage that we can put down on anyone, we'd probably make a, a dang good mercenary. But unfortunately, we're all about the altruism here, so we have to save the world and all that stupid stuff, I guess. Oh, silly people. Why couldn't they all just get the orb themselves, you know? So selfish. But hey, somebody's got to do it. The thankless job. But somebody has definitely got to do it, so we'll, we'll do our best here. Save the world from its inevitable destruction. Law is generally done as a postgrad degree, though, right? Depending, I mean, depending on what type of math you're taking, it could be the same thing, right? I feel like I've forgotten more math than... I don't know what I was going to go with there, I guess, than a lot of the, the general public learns over the course of a lifetime. That's just because as soon as I pass exams, I have a bad habit of forgetting a lot of the crucial details and having to relearn it every year. Brain's a little bit dumb like that sometimes. And thanks, Thelfon, for the stretch redemption. We'll definitely take a bit of time here. Let's take the hands off the keyboard and, and calm down the, uh, the brain here. Is it possible to have unambiguous law? Goes into Godel's incom or incompleteness theorems quickly. No logic theory? Yeah, that can be quite tangled too. Logic, yeah, can be a wild mess. And law has got to have the concept of natural numbers within them, you think? What what do you feel about that, Sapin? Do you have a, an innate understanding of, of natural numbers, and do you use it in your, your field? That's the lovely part about having Twitch chat around, is so many different perspectives and people from different backgrounds that you can learn some really cool things. Always have a lot of fun. Again, it kind of plays into what I was talking about earlier, where I like to just steal the homework from people that are smarter than me. If I can just learn all these cool things, listening 
to uh, various people. I mean, sure, you have to be a little bit careful, but fortunately our community is, is pretty solid when it comes to not just bragging about things and instead just talking about it. So there's a little less incentive to lie about backgrounds and stuff like that. <laughs>